gentlemen, together again, Tommy Cannon and Bobby Ball. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it's great to be back. Isn't it, Bobby? I'm excited, Tommy. I'm really excited. <laughs> and so you should be. And may I say, pal, I've never seen you looking as good. I feel great, Tommy. I'm on that new oil diet, you know. I put oil in all my food. Breakfast, dinner and supper. Yeah? Uh, has it made you lose weight? No, but I don't squeak like I used to. <laughs> I tell you what, Bobby. Hey, boy, you are funny, I'll give you that. Hey, say something clever and witty for me. Go on. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Hang on, I never press your button. No, but I'll press your picking button in a minute. <laughs> What's this supposed to be? Can't you see? It's you. <laughs> you must be joking. <laughs> it don't look anything like me. It's a picking dwarf. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tommy, how did you get the suit? How did you get me measurements? I don't need the measurements, do I? If it fits one dummy, it fits them all. <laughs> <laughs> you keep out of this. <laughs> Tommy, are you trying to tell me something? Well, yes, I suppose we are, really. We? Oh, yeah. What do you mean, we? Well, yeah, we. We don't need you anymore. Aww. What do you mean you don't need me anymore? Well, look, for goodness sake, this is the age of the computer, isn't it? Eh? Everything's being replaced. Inside this little fella is a little computer which reproduces your voice to an uncanny reality. Listen to this. Rock on, Tommy, you'll do for me, cocker. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound anything like me, does it? <laughs> Calm down, let's face life, right? You're being replaced. Replaced? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, in fact, the word I'm looking for is redundant. Redundant? I've got my pension scheme, so... <laughs> Listen, let me tell you what it is, right? He looks like you, talks like you, talks when I want him to. I don't have to give him half my wages. He'll never wear out. He only needs stuffing now and again. <laughs> That's what you want, stuffing. <laughs> you know something? You're evil, you. You're evil. Your eyes are dead. <laughs> evil! Evil! Watch it, right? Hey, hey. What Just happened? calm down. <laughs> Just get off, right? Me and Bobby have got our act to do. Oh. You started this. You started this. <laughs> Go on. Clear off. <coughs> How much did it cost, that wife? Oh, hey, custom made this. Mate made it for me. Forty-five pound. <laughs> I thought it was worth a bit more than that. <laughs> leave it, leave it. <laughs> leave it. Leave it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that little interruption, Bobby. I didn't. I hope it didn't upset you too much. I was beside myself for a minute, Tommy. <laughs> You're looking better than last time I saw you. I feel limp, Bobby. Limp all over. <laughs> well, we've all got our problems, Tommy. <laughs> Oi! Mastermind. Did you say something then? I never saw you do it. No, he didn't. I have something to say. He wants to talk to you. No, I don't. <laughs> I want to talk to you. I can't talk to you. I'm talking to Tommy. What are you talking about? I am Tommy. Too late, Tommy. You're redundant, pal. You're not needed anymore. Come on, Bobby, you can't replace me with that thing. Oh, I can't. It's too late. We opened at the Hippodrome Bradford on Monday, me and him, top of <laughs> Well, I tell you what, this is outrageous, isn't it, Bobby? You're not wrong there, Tommy. 
You keep out of this, Dwight. <laughs> Son, and you shut your mouth, right? Yeah, don't cause trouble, Tommy, you little bully. You keep out of this dummy. Uh, who are you calling a dummy? You, you dummy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down, right? You two, just have a bit of decorum here. What's he on about? I don't think he know, do I, Tommy? I never did. This All I know is a man must do what a man's got to do. Very when stupid a man idea. Idea. <laughs> Oh, it's your turn to do the dishes. I've got my own dish out here, thank you very much, Tommy. You know, it's marvellous, this. You can get satellite stations from all over the world, and even further, do you know that? Will you settle on one station, please, and come in? It's freezing out here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Tom. I'm going to point it, you tell me what country we're getting. Uh, right. Oh, that's marvellous, that. What are we getting, Tommy? There's two blokes here doing karate, all the way from Japan. I thought there was a little nip in there. <laughs> <laughs> We were going to introduce our musical guests. We have Frank Sinatra, Barbara Streisland, Placé Dissimos de Mestos. <laughs> I won't be a minute. All oh, right. Well, then, and funny enough, we've just <clears throat> had a phone call. Right. That, oh, it's just been... I've just I, didn't, I didn't hear it. That they can't make it, ladies and gentlemen, because they were on the way down, but the bus brought down. They were on the way down from Chesterfield, where they were doing a working men's club affiliated. <laughs> We're doing a benefit concert for the retiring chairman, Alf Perkins. So they won't be here. They won't be here. Very, very nice man. Very, very nice. Good riddance, I say. Sorry? Good riddance, I say. Why is that? Frank Sinatra. All that. Frank? Yeah. Frank's all that? Yeah. You must be joking. He thinks world of you. 
Never mind that. He's got all your record. <laughs> he told me so. I was talking to him. You never did. He oh, did. Come on, television. Want some new faces? Somebody young, virile, like me. <laughs> He's been on the centipods again. <laughs> he thinks it's an alternator. <laughs> Gentlemen, talking about new faces, here's a lovely lady from Italy who's had a number one all over Europe. Yes, she has. She's just come over from Italy tonight, and I've paid for a bus for her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sabrina. Very, very nice, girl. Very, very nice. Very nice. Bunch of cowards and deserters ever to go to prison in time or wow. I'm an assailant. Shut up, I'm an Who this lullagogging sidewander? Johnny B. Good, Jefferson Johnson, Beauregard, birds are custard. <laughs> Sir! Custard, eh? <laughs> I'm an assailant. Uh, shut up yourself! Shut up! Shut up! Custard. I didn't desert, so it... I was merely advancing backwards. I was one volunteer for a very highly dangerous mission. One volunteer, one pace forward, march! <laughs> now, just a cotton-picking minute here! Congratulations, my boy. I'm going to give you a chance to redeem yourself. I'm going to send you on an errand of mercy for my gorgeous niece, Miss Scarlet. Why, wow, Miss Scarlet. I remember Miss Scarlet flitting through the meadow in a see-through blouse. Uh, sure enough. Uh, <laughs> she showed enough for me, sir. <laughs> Why, here comes that gorgeous little lady now. Why, usher my mouth, it's the queen of the south. It's the ever-loving Miss Scarlet O'Mara. Yeah! Scarlet. 
morning, Sergeant. Oh, morning, Miss Scarlet. Are you the brave soldier boy who's volunteered to help me out of my predicament? No, here's the fellow. No good yellow belly coward. He surely deserves his nickname, Ronnie Custer. <laughs> Shut up, 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 I was the little lady who took this boy provisions when he was fighting for his life over yonder on that day of hill. Bunker, it's none of your business. <laughs> One night in my fancy mansion, I seduced this little pa. <laughs> I am dead, Miss Scarlet Ribbons, and your water bed blew up. <laughs> The rest has been cut out. <laughs> Shut up! She's not like that! She's not like that! Are you ready to lay down your life for me, Johnny B? No, ma'am. <laughs> like I was telling the Colonel Saunders here, I'm too chicken to go. <laughs> what do you want to see a fella do for you, Miss Scarlet, honey? I want you to go out yonder and bring back the man who took your place in my heart when you ran away. Rhett Butlin. Rhett Butlin? <laughs> Sounds a little camp to me. <laughs> Not my Rhett. Mm. He's old man. Mm. Five long weeks ago, he went away to spy on the enemy, and he never did come back to my loving arms. Well, I ain't going. <laughs> I ain't going. Because I'm a dedicated yellow belly. <laughs> Don't be so cowardly, Custer. No way, old Jay. Oh, fiddle dee dee. Oh. All right. I'll go. I'll send you a postcard from Broken Hill. Bunker! It's none of your business! <laughs> Just a minute. What? Great balls of fire. Where? <laughs> It couldn't be. It must be. It is. It's him. It's my man come home from the war. Yeah, it's red, all right. It surely is. Where? There. Where? It's him, Red Butlin. Hi, dear. Hi. Come on, Tom. You can't do it. Oh, I'm here, Red. I'm here. She's here. She's here. And then we can make mad, passionate love forever and ever. Thank you, my dear. I'd rather go skiing. It's the time in the show, ladies and gentlemen, that I bend over backwards to look up one of my relatives. <laughs> You're not going to start telling everybody about them boring relatives, are you? No, no. Just one, Tommy. Yeah. My great uncle George. Huh? What was so great about your uncle George? He was an hero, Tommy. A saint. A legend to me. <laughs> legend? Oh, he, wa he wasn't even that, was he? Hey? Eh? Just a common convict. In Victorian times. 
He were a leg into me, Tommy. He a very, very, very nice man. Very, very nice man. <laughs> I remember the day, ladies and gentlemen, the first day that my Uncle George went to prison. Mm. It was on a Thursday. No, and no, wait. Are you sure? No. Oh. I tell a lie, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It was a Friday. <laughs> I remember distinctly now, because that was the day that my mother put... The cat out? No, no, she put a rice pudding on a low light. Oh, right. And my Uncle George was... His nickname was Convict 99. <laughs> Cecil. What did you say? Hey, nothing, nothing, Cecil. Get out of it! All right, climb it. I like the food, very nice. Come in. <laughs> Convict 99 reported for duty, sir. Convict 99, come here. Why have you got so many balls? That's a bit personal, isn't it? I'm asking a question. Because every time I run away, sir, when they catch me and fetch me back, they give me another ball. Well, why don't you stop running? I'm saving up for a set. <laughs> That's supposed to be funny, that? Well, I only need three more, and then I get a luxury weekend on Dartmoor. <laughs> That's supposed to be a joke? Yes, sir. Well, it's not funny. Yes, well, I've been in solitary and I seem to have lost my timing. <laughs> oh, sir, I'm absolutely starving. Sir, I'm starving. I've been on bread and water for three days. Get up, you wimp. I'm starving, sir. I'm getting dizzy spells and nosebleeds. I could eat a scabby horse. <laughs> that can be arranged. So let me tell you something. Behind that door is the governor's dining quarters. And he's entertaining some very important friends, right? And he wants his meal served by a convict. And that's you, Stop all right? It. Look, here we are. Some beautiful green pea soup. Oh, that's beautiful. You like that? It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starving, sir. Just relax. Now then, what you would like, right? Before you serve it, you have to taste it. Before I serve it, I have to taste it? Yes. Right, sir. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm starving! Get out! What are you doing? There's somebody at the door! Stop it! Stop it! Control yourself! I'm starving! Just starving? For goodness sake! Look! Here's a little brown whip. Get off it! Get off it! Get off it, man! Get off it! You're going insane! I'll have to put you back in the block! No, no, not the block! I'll remember that! <laughs> Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Stop it. Look, get out of it. Get out of it, for God's sake, man. Samantha, calm, you, calm yourself, will you, for God's sake. It's a mess, all this. Stop. <laughs> Oh, Belkin. Oh, hey, beautiful. Let's 
Listen, Cecil did that, right? It's a lovely wine mm. from the valleys of Italy. Mm. Right. Oh, that's a cheeky little wine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Is it peace leaves a motion, Porter? <laughs> Clear enough, yes. Mm. Is it nice, that? Well, I'll tell you this, he's a very, very nice man. Very, very nice. <laughs> So let us taste this before he has it. Very, very nice. Well, he always does that, the governor. He likes it to be tasted before he has it, you know. Mm. Oh, yeah, the, the previous four governors died, you know. What of? Cyanide poisoning. No, I'm all right. I'm fine. I'm fine. No, no, no. Try No, I'm on a diet. No, I'm on a diet, so no. I, I think I've got to like it bread and water now. Relax. Take it easy, right? Now then. Take him the pea soup. All right? Right, so I will. And don't forget, knock. Right, right, the governor, knock. So that's when he's took his balls back. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Tom Mick 99. Try the brown Windsor. I do, will, sir. OK. Don't forget to knock. Quick! <laughs> 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 what is it? What is it? It's not salty enough. Here, 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 here. Here. Ooh. Not a lot, sir. Not a lot, sir, no. Well, if I were you... It's going all on me back, sir. Well, listen to what I'm saying to you. The brown wins it. Listen, if I was you, I'd have a word with the cook. I think I will, sir. Excuse me, have you got a minute? Yes, sir. Mm. You didn't lose your temper? No, no, sir. No. But I could have done. I'm a little swine when I'm annoyed. <laughs> I've got it, 99. Perhaps. <laughs> the governor has got a sweet tooth. Yeah. Fine. But shouldn't I take him the steak and dumplings first? Do you want to do that? Yeah. Well, I thought he'd got to his sweet. <laughs> no, no, all right. Well, we'll go back to the steak and dumplings. <laughs> take the steak and make the stew and dumplings for him, right? OK. I'm there about it. OK. Oh, and don't forget to knock. I will. Well, I'll tell you something. Huh? I'm like a volcano when I erupt. I hope somebody can hear me. Go on. But don't forget to not. <laughs> don't look at me. Just go in. <laughs> Oh, well. Excuse me. He's pushing his luck him, sir. Did you lose your kill then? Nearly, sir. Mm. Cos I'm a little swine when I'm annoyed! Now I've got it! What, sir? <laughs> Perhaps the governor's got a sweet tooth? <laughs> right? I hadn't thought of that. Exactly! I'm <laughs> trying with the trifle! Just a minute, I've had a thought. 
The trifle. No, oh, listen to this. The trifle. No, listen to this. It's not the food he doesn't like, it's me. The trifle, Bobby. I think he's very prejudiced, him, sir. Will you take the trifle in? Mind you, there's a lot of people prejudiced, you know. You'd be surprised how many. Take the trifle in. But, you know, everybody likes prison wardeners, don't they? Of course they do. Well, you take it in. No, I will not take the trifle in. All right, all right, move it. I don't have to knock. for a parking offence. <laughs> The chef while I'm at it. I should. <coughs> Have you got oh, no! <laughs> I'm a little swine when I'm annoyed. <laughs> Must have been cold there in my shadow To never have sunlight on your face You were content to let me shine You always walked a step behind But you were the one with all the strength Only a face without a name I never heard you once complain Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything
my way. 